Okay, welcome back, friends. We are here on Corbett Report Radio on this Thursday evening. And as is our want on Thursday evenings, we're going to switch gears entirely from talking about the world news to talking about something closer to home for all of us. And in fact, something that's in all of our homes. Of course, the one and only essential ingredient of life, food. Food and drink. So we're going to switch gears and talk about food world order with our good friend James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, FoodWorldOrder.com, CyberspaceWar.com, HolyHexes.com, and NewWorldNextWeek.com. That was a mouthful and a half. But James, thank you so much for coming on tonight. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. I always appreciate it. Yeah, well, I appreciate having you here, and I appreciate the uh, the stories that you're always lining up, which are sometimes empowering and and hopeful and and just such great stories to, to go through and then other times really quite disgusting and unfortunately i think we're going to be starting off with one of those if uh, if i'm reading this right so uh, what do you yeah. Got, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it doesn't go, always go that way does it this was you know like many things i'll i'll collect my stories and kind of bookmark things and and put them away and this one you know was a headline that was immediately eye-catching and I just kind of thought it was a silly, weird regional thing. But then as the couple of days went by, it started to blow up. I was like, oh, and then it's a large story now. I take it from naturalnews.com, but I have added links in from, you know, Washington Post, LA Times, just all around the world as this story has legs, if you will. Feed us to feed us. Oklahoma senator says no to aborted fetal cells in food. And the naturalnews.com story, like they do so well in so many ways, breaks down what the real story is. In order to simulate various flavors in processed foods, some food manufacturers are actually using aborted fetal cells to test and produce these artificial chemical enhancers that millions of Americans consume every single day. Concerned about the ethical and moral implications of such a process, Oklahoma Senator Ralph Shorty has introduced new legislation to prohibit this practice from occurring in his home state. Cinemex, S-E-N-O-M-Y-X, a California-based biotechnology company that specializes in food flavorings, in developing food flavorings, is one such company that uses aborted embryonic cells to create isolated human taste receptors, which are used in the production of food chemicals. And this company has partnered with several major food manufacturers, including Kraft, Pepsi, and Nestle. The senator was quoted and interviewed by KRMG News Talk Radio, where he said, quote, There's a potential that there are companies that are using aborted human babies in their research and development of basically enhancing flavor for artificial flavors. What I'm saying is that if that does happen, then we are not going to allow them to manufacture it here, end quote. James, the article goes on to, of course, note that while aborted fetal cells are not necessarily in the final products made by Pepsi, Kraft, or Nestle, such cells appear to needlessly play a part of the production of artificial flavor chemicals used by these companies. And since there are viable alternatives to this questionable practice, Senator Shorty and also Children of God for Life, a pro-life watchdog group, and others are calling for it to end. James, where on earth would you like to take this disgusting story? Uh, I'd like to take it to the moon and leave it there. But um, since we can't do that, um, I, I thought it was interesting that uh, we, with this story, I, I saw this from, I, I don't even remember. I, I think I sent you a link because I'd seen it, but you'd seen it independently. Mm -hmm. Whatever link I'd seen from some whatever mainstream news source I was looking at it had said uh, something to the effect of how, oh, well, this is... Uh, Really, what this is is uh, just this crazy uh, Oklahoma senator who says he doesn't have any proof that this is actually going on, but he wants to make sure it stops. And they kind of portray it in that, well, this is kind of kooky, isn't it? It's just just someone who's just making uh, political hay out of uh, out of uh, straw. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't make any sense. But um, <laughs> but uh, so I I actually fell for it. I mean, even me, a seasoned uh, news veteran here who's uh, who doesn't believe anything that they they say or write in the uh, corporate whore media, I was thinking, oh, okay, well, you know. It is kind of a silly thing, but maybe, you know, there's the possibility. But then reading the, the information you have up here, it, it actually is used in the production mm -hmm. of some of the, the flavors. It's just not directly in the product itself, which, uh, I mean, it's it's mind-boggling that this is going on. It, it really is, and that's, I think, in so many ways, and I think what, you know, what we try and do, and I think hopefully, you know, at my best, what I strive to do is kind of show the, you know, the story behind the story. So... It was. This reminds me of another another big news story that kind of played out here in the states today. I don't know if you caught it, James, where 
Obama had that run in with uh, Jane Brewer, the governor of Arizona, and it's all about her. I saw the headline. Yeah. Kind of pointing at him, and they had this heated exchange. So, of course, it's all about this photo and this heated exchange, and oh, you know, who was disrespecting who? But the real story is ultimately about he wants amnesty for millions and millions and millions of illegals, but she wants to secure the border. So it's one of those stories of we're not talking about what the real story is. We're just kind of talking about the show surrounding it. So this is like, yeah, like someone would say, I want to put forth legislation that, you know, makes it illegal for dogs to marry cats. It's like, well, is that really happening? Uh, no. So it's just this silly, you know, silly thing. But like you just said, this really is happening. Natural News provides the links to other stories, and you can read about some of the chemicals. And they also note that Campbell Soup used to be a Cinemix partner until, again, the aforementioned pro-life watchdog group contacted them about the fetal cell issue, and they stopped doing it. So that's another example of so many ways if we actually contact food places and basically say, I'm not buying your crap anymore. They'll, oh, God, I'm sorry. And they'll a lot of times kind of rush to change because they're beholden to their shareholders. And whatever flies, you know, they'll continue to do. But if the people aren't buying it, either, you know, metaphorically or, or physically, they'll they'll change. Absolutely. Well, that's that's our only our only effective weapon is just not to take the uh, the crap that they're trying to feed us. And um, in this case, I think there's a pretty good reason not to do it. Um, uh, yeah, just absolutely mind boggling. And and again, for rate, me, this really this really kind of then opens up the specter of all this. I mean, we're t <laughs> in a way, are we kind of talking about cannibalism? It starts to get into that realm of like, oh, this is like some kind of you know dystopian novel and. It's the idea. So that's again in the news and in the in the media when we kind of watch these. You know what movie it reminds me of? <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. Soylent Green. Yeah, Soylent Green. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> See, but that's okay. So I mentioned that you know a month or so ago on here, but here here it is, and I didn't have to go you know digging and and trying to stretch and contort to make connections to that. You really don't. I mean, it it is sci-fi nightmare, and uh, unfortunately, we're living it. But as you say, we can change it. So, speaking of food waste, ah, uh, and and again, this I, I've got a great flashback reminder for folks. But this comes from Business Week, which is of course Bloomberg, and again, these are all posted on foodworldorder.com. And again, James will always provide all the show notes and, and links and things. Food waste denounced by ministers as almost one billion go hungry. Food waste was denounced by farm ministers and policymakers gathered in Berlin as almost one billion people in developing countries go hungry. Consumers in rich countries dispose of 220 million metric tons of food waste every year, equal to the entire food output of sub-Saharan Africa. Jose Graziano da Silva, the Director General of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, which of course is at FAO.org, and he was telling 64 other agriculture ministers meeting in Berlin over the weekend. The flashback that we provide, James, goes back to May of 2010 on foodworldorder.com and, and comes from the San Francisco Guardian. California throws away enough food to fill 35 stadiums a year. I believe it's the Staples Center that they actually compare it to in Los Angeles. Vast amounts of food trashed despite incentives. And the reminder that I add at the top of, of that posting, I believe I, I, I paraphrase from who I seem to uh, kind of always cite, cryptagon.com. Keep this story in mind the next time you hear Bill Gates talking about, we need genetically modified food to mm. feed the starving world. Yeah. Yeah, let's not look at fundamentally reforming the system so that we don't have this ridiculous situation where one part of the world is wasting 35 stadium fulls a year of food and other parts are going hungry. No, let's not re reorganize the system at a fundamental level. No, let's just find better ways of growing crap that people don't need that'll make them sick and ultimately infertile. And that's exactly what mm. the GMO agenda is all about. And uh, and uh, again, it's just it it it's it is the definition of insanity and we were touching on this last night and Werner from New Brunswick called in was talking about um fish that was being uh fished in off the east coast of Canada that was being shipped to China for processing and then shipped back to Canada for consumption which is the, just the absolute craziest thing you could ever think of doing but uh but because it makes economic sense mm -hmm. it suddenly makes sense so um 
So absolutely, there's something that that needs to be done about this. And once again, it's something that we have to we have to do for ourselves. And uh, and I think we're we've all been guilty of, of wasting some amount of food at some point. But uh, but I think when you put it into this perspective, it just it really makes you stop and think about the uh, the wasted not just the wasted food but the wasted opportunity the wasted economic mm. uh, opportunity everything here is just complete waste and it's been engineered into this system the way it is i <laughs> you kind of remind me we were out with some friends last week and they were just you know they didn't finish their food and you kind of look at it it's just like look, look at all that food you know i'm going to eat some of that right now and yeah i'd like a box i'm going to take the you know the rest of that home and even kind of tried to, you know, kind of prod them and say, you know, baby Jesus cries when you waste food, <laughs> try, you know, to try and kind of guilt them a little bit with humor and to at least plant that idea of just like, oh, yeah, that's right. Look at, you know, look at all that chicken. Look at all that salad you still have left. Those kind of like we just said last week and, and pretty much runs through everything. You know, the real the real revolution begins at home in your kitchen, in your in your medicine cabinet or on your dinner plate. So, James, well, this... luckily, my wife doesn't allow me to waste food. So, that's see, there, the... that, and that's yeah, that'll work. That that's how you do it. <laughs> so, this James, I think, segues again quite well, and we take this from the old gray lady, the New York Times. Wary Japanese take food safety into their own hands. Critics say farm and health officials have been qu too quick to allow food to go to market without adequate testing or have ignored calls from consumers to fully disclose test results, and they say the government can no longer pull the wool over the public's eyes as they contend it has routinely done in the past. Since the accident, the government has tried to continue its business-as-usual approach of understanding the severity of the accident and insisting that it knows best. But the people are learning from the blogs, Twitter, Facebook, that the government's food monitoring system is simply not credible. And that is an economics professor at Keio University in Tokyo. One result has been a burst of civic activism. Rare in a nation with a weak civil society that depends on its elite bureaucrats more than citizens groups to safeguard national interests, including, of course, public health. No longer confident the government is looking out for their interests, newly formed groups of consumers and even farmers are beginning their own radiation monitoring efforts. And the article goes on to discuss all these sort of, you know, independent radiation, you know, monitoring setups, the Geiger counters, of course, posting everything online sharing your information, collating it with other people, either in your region. And James, as we've now been discussing for nearly one year, the citizens adding in all this information. So, you know, people putting it up online so we can look at what's going on here in Portland or up in Canada or in Michigan or in Virginia or, or everywhere else. Exactly right. And I guess I'm, uh, I'm living proof that, that, the Japanese are getting more wary in uh, in what they choose to eat. If I, if I can be counted as Japanese for the purposes of this article, at any rate, um, certainly uh, myself and my wife have been, as I've said many times, very very careful about what we're buying and where the, uh, the vegetables source from, which uh, we've never really. I mean, you've never really thought about until until you have to go through something like this and like, oh, that's coming from the eastern part of the country. I don't want any of that, so we'll we'll forego that. So. We've had to forego uh, onions and potatoes to a large extent this year because they all source from the eastern part of the country. But um, it's it's very interesting and and something that a lot of people may not know. They've got these uh, these labels that they're putting on certain produce and vegetables that uh, that have this uh, this mark. And when you see that mark, it means it's it's part of it's been radiation tested. It's it's okay. And so my wife sometimes tries to slip something by me with one of those. Oh look, it's got the mark. I'm like I don't care. I don't I don't trust it as far as I can throw it not worth the paper it's written on basically so um so i think unfortunately a lot of people probably do believe but um, but less and less people are believing just whatever the government says especially in the wake of all of the things that have come out recently about fukushima as we went over on new world next week yesterday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I, I i mean this i can't really imagine i guess as as just you were kind of talking about that you know because it's one thing for me here in portland which which i said you know i think is fortunately a little better, a little well along becoming a little more, you know, food, you know, sustainable within your, your own area. So even just trying to think of like, oh, well, I don't want to do that because it's from further away. It might even still be organic. But, you know, I think in a lot of ways being local can be more important than, than being organic. Of course, they're both important. 
But I can't even imagine Agreed. having that come into play as well, you know, of looking at, you know, oh, well, you know, that comes from, you know, Michigan or Connecticut or somewhere, and I want to get something, you know, here in the Pacific Northwest to have to go through, you know, and, and, and deal with what with what you're dealing with there. I'm glad they even labeled that here, though, because they, they certainly wouldn't in Canada, as far as I can remember anyway. It's been several years since I lived there, but I don't think they tell you what province it comes from or anything, so... So it's amazing they do label it to that extent, but then it's also the question: Can you even trust that in some uh-huh. of the main like mega supermarkets? Uh huh. You know, and who knows what they're doing. <laughs> we've we've made the the somewhat obvious discovery just the other day, I guess, in thinking about labels and reading the you know the the fine print, as it were. You know, we enjoy San Pellegrino. You know, sparkling water in the glass bottle. It's you know, it's nice. It's refreshing. It's 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 carbonated. You don't. You can get that kind of you know bubbly fix without going to soda. But of course, you know we kind of looked at it. We were like, wait a second, it's distributed by the you know North American division of Nestle. And it's like, oh, well, let's scratch that one off the list. It's like, how can I mean, we can't continue to buy that? There you go. Shall we purge? We shall purge the January twenty sixth binge and purge lunch change in single strains. I think the main one, James, that I want to mention, and again for folks, if they're going, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> on the on the website, generally when I reach the Thursday, because I do my live show Friday mornings. Generally, when I reach Thursday, if I haven't posted things up as their own individual posts, I just kind of slap them up at a as a big list of headlines and and call them a, a news purge. But the main one on the binge and purge here, 32 million reasons to cheer the USDA. As grist.org notes, there are 32 million reasons why the United States Department of Agriculture's new school meal standards are good news because that's the number of children who participate in the national school breakfast and lunch programs in the U.S. who will soon be served far more nutritious and hopefully delicious school meals. Announced by First Lady Michelle Obama, who was instrumental in getting the new rules written by ensuring that the Healthy, Hungry, Free, Hunger Free Kids Act passed in 2010 and it updated meal standards in spite of last-minute meddling by Congress. Yes, surprise, surprise. Well, but, uh, yeah, what can you say about this? There's too much to say, so perhaps we'll come back and say mm-hmm. it on the other side. We also have a caller waiting on the line, so we'll oh, go good. to that call. But let's uh, just take a short break. We'll be right back right after this. Okay, friends, welcome back to Corbett Report Radio. And here we are just wrapping up with James Evan Pilato of Food World Order. And we were just talking about a uh, grist.org uh, article, 32 million reasons to cheer new school lunch rolls. I have a lot to say about this, but James, mm-hmm. what's your take? I, You know, in a way, where it's like, well, of course we can do these things. Of course we could easily feed and clothe and educate, you know, and it would be, if we wanted to do it correctly, we could do it, but that's not really on the agenda. I think this is just another thing that, that again, you know, what is school, but 15 plus thousand hours of conditioning and that can throw them some bones and say, oh, look, you know, they're eating a carrot, so everything's okay yeah. now. And we were able to stop, the, you know, those pesky Republicans because it's always framed in the false left-right exactly. right exactly paradigm. Exactly right. Yeah, I agree completely. I think uh, certainly, you know, government could do that. It could do so many things, but of course it doesn't because it's controlled by the interests that created it. And uh, absolutely, they don't care about your kids' health. So the, any good that they're doing out of this program is going to be uh, tangential. It'd be much better to do the institute this kind of thing on a local level through volunteerism mm-hmm. and charity. But uh, at any mm-hmm. rate, uh, we do have a caller on the line. So let's go to Michael in Washington. Michael, you're on the on the air. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you very much. I'm very happy to sp- speak with both of you guys again. Uh, you know, I'm listening to all your stories, uh, James Pilato. Um, and, and I saw, I discerned a thread, and I, being kind of a philosophical type myself, I think it's this. The modern world is based on an ideology we might call scientism. And this scientistic ideology premises itself on a universe that is born of chaos and random events. 
So if you have that model in your mind that this is reality, that we're, it's all a matter of energy exchanges, then why not use aborted fetuses in your breakfast food? Why, why worry about feeding the hungry and clothing the naked? Because we're all just random events, you know. We're just biological constructs uh, in the midst of chaos. But if there is some intrinsic transcendental order to this world, then life itself has intrinsic meaning, not imputed meaning, which means we can no longer live as consumers in a consumerist paradise because there's something else going on here than producing goods and consuming them. That is a deep thought for a mm. Thursday evening. Uh, James, your take. I, you know, I just I, I started to think of and and I've mentioned here before that that I work I work at a pretty cool independent grocery store here in in the Pacific Northwest. But I've even had conversations with a couple of people who I know have kind of progressed progressed along, and they've they've obviously been starting to do more and more homework. That they kind of said to me, you know, well, gosh, you know, I love shopping at this store, but I think as time goes by and the more I learn, the the less I'm going to come here. Even though we're, you know, we try and be as part of our mission to be better and to be more community oriented and we have great gourmet local raw foods. But the more you learn, yeah, and she had it exactly right. It's just like, yeah, you're going to have to do it more yourself and, and stop being less of a, of a consumer. And again, I'm not preaching from some high horse like we say all the time. It's like this is this is as educational to me, you know, first and, and hopefully for for everyone else as well. Agreed. And on the uh, more metaphysical, physical, philosophical side of it, uh, I don't know if, Michael, if you've read Martin Heidegger, but I believe it was Heidegger who came up with the idea of science converting the world into standing resource and how that uh, changes our perception of what the world is mm. and how we relate to it. Heidegger also said the most important philosophical question is why there is existence at all. Exactly right. And unfortunately, not a question that we're going to get to the bottom to the bottom of in the last few seconds here. But Michael, thank you so much for your call. Please call in thank again you. anytime. And uh, James, uh, thank you again for all the Food World Order headlines. And thank you to everyone out there for listening. And uh, let's do it again tomorrow night. Same time, same channel. And I'll be here. James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Thank you once again. Until tomorrow night, take care and thanks for listening.